Good day, Earth Science students. Welcome to Video Lecture Episode 20. Today we begin the last section of Chapter 23, that being Section 3. So in this, we're going to be talking about exploring Earth's moon, and in connection with that, missions to the moon and mapping the moon. Now let's talk about the objectives for Section 3. The first objective is as follows. Describe recent discoveries about the moon, and Objective 2, examine facts about the moon that might influence future space travel. So let's go ahead and start talking about missions to the moon. The moon has always fascinated humanity. People have made up stories about how it was formed. Children's stories, in other words, stories told to children, even suggested it was made of cheese, which of course we know it doesn't, but it's still kind of funny to think about that. Now, of course, for centuries, astronomers also have studied the moon for clues to its makeup and origin. That's just been part of our fascination is studying and trying to understand it. Well, in 1959, the former Soviet Union launched the first Luna spacecraft, enabling up close study of the moon. If you look on slide 125, you can see a picture of that. Two years later, the United States began a similar program with the first Ranger spacecraft. Following the uncrewed Ranger missions, the United States launched a series of lunar orbiters. Lunar orbiters are just those orbiters or satellites that go around the moon because lunar refers to moon. Now, the spacecraft in these early missions took detailed photographs of the moon. There also were seven surveyor spacecrafts designed to land on the moon. Now, of those seven, five of them successfully touched down on the lunar surface. The surveyor probes took detailed photographs and performed the first analysis of the soil of the moon, which is pretty cool to think about. Now the goal of the program, the astronaut program in the United States, was to prepare for the landing was to prepare for landing astronauts on the moon. And this goal was achieved in 1969 by the astronauts of Apollo 11. Now by 1972, when the Apollo missions had ended, 12 US astronauts had walked on the moon. Now a timeline of these was in your textbook and I'll see if I can get an image or you can also Google this as well. But it's pretty amazing to think about from 19, excuse me, make sure I have the date here, from 1969 to 1972 that 12 astronauts had walked on the moon and consider all the information that we had received as well. Now let's talk about surveying the moon in particular. More than 20 years passed before the United States resumed its studies of the moon from space. In 1994, the Clementine was placed into lunar orbit. I have a picture of that particular satellite on slide 131 if you'd like to look at that. Now what was the goal of this one? Well, the goal of this one was to conduct a two-month survey of the moon's surface. An important aspect of the study was collecting data on the mineral content of moon rocks. In fact, this part of its mission was instrumental in naming the spacecraft. Now, curious, why do they call it Clementine? Well, Clementine was the daughter of a miner in the ballad, My Darling Clementine. While in orbit, Clementine also mapped features on the moon's surface, including huge impact basins. So it's pretty interesting to think about the fact that they were looking at these rocks and they were looking at the, these minerals and the content of them. That's how it got its nickname. It got it from a, a ballad, which is a song, and the ballad's called My Darling Clementine, so they called the spacecraft the Clementine. That was the one that was into lunar orbit in 1994. All right, now let's talk about impact basins. When meteorites and other objects strike the moon, they leave behind depressions in the moon's surface. The depression left behind by an object striking the moon is known as an impact basin or an impact crater. And if you look on one slide 134, you can see an image of what I'm talking about there. Now let's talk a little bit more about these impact basins. Well, the South Pole Aitken Basin is the oldest identifiable impact feature on the moon's surface, and you can see that on slide 135. At 12 kilometers in depth and 2,500 kilometers, 2,500 kilometers in diameter, it is also the largest and deepest impact basin in the solar system. So the depth is only 12 kilometers, but its diameter, in other words, like the width, if you were to draw a circle, is 2,500 kilometers. That's crazy to think how big that is when you start thinking about those numbers. Now, data returned by Clementine gave scientists the first set of high-resolution photographs of this area of the moon. Because much of this basin stays in shadow throughout the moon's rotation, a cold area has formed where ice deposits from impacting comets might have collected. All right, and you can see some of that in some images I have on slide 136. All right, we're going to conclude today with slide 137. I just want to mention some things still in connection with impact basins. While a large plateau that is always in sunlight also was discovered in this area, this area that I'm referring to, remember that is that large basin, that being the South Pole Aitken Basin, all right? Now, a large plateau that is always in the sunlight also was discovered in this area. If ice, truly, if ice truly is near this plateau, as indicated by radio signals that Clementine reflected off the moon to Earth, it would be the ideal location to build a moon colony powered by solar energy. So what they're thinking is, since there is some sunlight in this particular portion that usually hits on this portion, they think, hey, if we ever build a colony here, we could use solar power to generate anything we have. Pretty cool to think about. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I do hope this lecture has been helpful. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Reach out, send me email or messages, and I'll be more than happy to help. Take care. Have a nice day.